a pivotal game five between the Boston Bruins and the Carolina Hurricanes is set for tonight in Raleigh. And I'm also going to talk about why Charlie McAvoy deserved more love in the Norris Trophy voting. Let's get into it on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Tuesday, May 10th, and I don't know about you, but I've already got the butterflies floating around in the old tum-tum as we get ready for Game 5 tonight between our Bruins and the Hurricanes with the series tied at two. Before we get into that, I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast is free and available on all platforms, so please smash that subscribe button. Even a bit harder than you want right now because during the playoffs, things are allowed that weren't allowed in the regular season, so just smash it. You won't hear from any department of podcast safety youtube you can also watch it there if you want to get a glimpse into my family room see bessie crawling on me um that would be greatly appreciated you can also follow along on social media at locked nhl bruins on both twitter and instagram and you can find me my dad jokes hockey tweets at ian c mclaren Game 5, tonight, pivotal, you know, bit cliche to say pivotal, but really, with the series tied at 2, it could go either way, and hopefully the Bruins can play a bit better on the road than they did in the first two games of the series. We'll talk about Game 5 here in a moment, but first I wanted to address... Charlie McAvoy not being a finalist for the Norris Trophy Award. Uh, The three finalists are Kale McCarr of the Colorado Avalanche, Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators, and Victor Hedman of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Not coincidentally, the top three scoring defensemen this season. Yossi led the way with 96 points, which is incredible. Uh, Kale McCarr, 86 points. Victor Hedman at 85 points. Now, Fluto Shinzawa of The Athletic posted an article yesterday talking about why Charlie McAvoy will never win the Norris. And it's quite simply because his point totals aren't as high as some of his peers. Charlie McAvoy finished the season with 10 goals, 46 assists in 78 games. That was tied for the 8th highest point total among uh, all NHL defensemen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One point behind Devin Taves of the Avalanche and Aaron Ekblad of the Florida Panthers. And, you know, 40 points behind... Roman Yossi. That's a huge gap, to be sure. But if we dig a bit deeper, at 5-on-5, where the majority of hockey games are played, Charlie McAvoy was the number one defenseman in a bunch of key metrics, key stats, okay? Shot attempts, differential, number one among all defensemen with at least 1,200 minutes of ice time. So there were 87 defensemen who skated at least 1,200 minutes of 5-on-5 ice time this season. Charlie McAvoy had the best shot attempt differential on ice of any of them. While he was on the ice, 
the Bruins generated uh, 1,529 shot attempts, only allowed 1,115. Shot attempt differential, number one as well. The Bruins generated 957 shots, only allowed 595. When it comes to high danger chances, that's, you know, shots within that home plate area around the net. The Bruins generated 304 high danger chances, only allowed 181. Number one with a 62.68 shot attempt differential. Uh, what other metrics was he tops in? Expected goals. Uh, 62.77, which is a full 5.5% better than second place Mackenzie Weger of the Panthers, Kale McCarr third in that area. So shot attempts, shots for, uh, expected goals, high danger chances. Charlie McAvoy was number one among all NHL defensemen with a minimum of 1,200 um, minutes skated five on five. So yeah, he didn't blow away the competition in terms of points, but when he was on the ice, um, oh yeah, and scoring chances for as well. Number one, the Bruins generated 750 scoring chances, allowed only 523, 58.92. So that shot attempt differential, shot differential, scoring chance differential, high danger chance differential, expected goals for Charlie McAvoy, number one. Five on five, defenseman who played 1,200 minutes. Now, Fluto Shinzawa maintained that McAvoy will never win because he has hit a ceiling offensively. And not that he's not deserving of the award, but voters are drawn to those more tangible stats, right? In 2009, when Zdeno Chara won the Norris Trophy, he ranked... Uh, ninth among all defensemen with 50 points. His career high was 52, so McAvoy's already surpassed his career high. And he still won the Norris Trophy that year, despite being well down in the defensive scoring race. So why has scoring become more of a premium over the past 13 years? I don't know. But if you look at Charlie McAvoy's overall game, what he's able to accomplish on the ice, keeping the puck away from his goaltender and helping generate opportunities at the other end of the ice, that's the whole point of hockey. You want to protect your own net and make things difficult at the other end of the ice for the opposition. He was the number one defenseman in terms of uh, differentials in those categories. Not that he generated all those shot attempts on his own, but he was effective at keeping the puck away from Linus Allmark, Jeremy Swayman, Tugarask when he was in there, and getting the puck up the ice. Didn't get the points. Maybe, you know, the Bruins struggled to score five on five as a team. So that was a significant um, it's also worth mentioning that, sure, Charlie McAvoy um, started a bunch of his um, shifts in the offensive zone, but not as much as... Um, Kale McCarr or Roman Yossi. He ranked 13th with a 56.76 offensive zone faceoff percentage. So he's starting more than half of his shifts in the offensive zone. That certainly helps generate 
shot attempts, what have you, when you're starting in the offensive zone. Roman Yossi started almost 61% of his shifts in the offensive zone. Kale McCarr, 60.1%. And they had lower shot attempt differentials, lower numbers, like Roman Yossi. His shot attempt differential ranked 30th among defensemen with the 1,200 minutes, 5-on-5, 51.49. So he's starting 61% of his shifts, and he's barely over the uh, 50% mark when it comes to generating shot attempts. All this to say, Charlie McAvoy deserved more love in the Norris Trophy conversation. When you look at these key defensive metrics, he was number one. Shot attempt differential. Scoring chance differential. High danger chance differential. Shot differential. Okay, when he's on the ice, he's the number one defenseman at limiting the opposition and helping his team generate. And that is what a defenseman's supposed to do. Didn't get the point totals. Maybe they'll come. Maybe he's hit a ceiling. Certainly, it helps if you're able to quarterback a power play effectively and kind of rack up stats, those uh, power play stats. When it comes to, uh, you know, power play points, Hedman, Yossi, Makar, 1, 2, and 3. McAvoy, only 21 power play points compared to 38 for Hedman, 37 for Yossi. 34 for Makar. So, yeah, that's all going to contribute to the voters. But in my mind, Charlie McAvoy deserved to be a top three uh, Norris Trophy defenseman. And it's high time that they institute a best offensive defenseman award and keep the Norris Trophy as the best overall defenseman. Yossi, give him the Bobby Orr Award take him out of the Norris Trophy running, and put Charlie McAvoy in there. That's my hot take of the day. Before we tee up Game 5, quick word about Bet Online. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including the NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, um fights and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports and more. Head to the website today, use your mobile device and learn more about the trends in action at Bet Online where the game starts. Thank you so much again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts, free and available wherever you get podcasts. The Bruins might have some good news for Game 5 as Hampus Lindholm may be able to return to the lineup. Uh, He hasn't played since Game 2. He's got an upper body injury after a hit from Carolina's Andre Svechnikov. But he did practice with his teammates. It was an optional skate on Monday. And it's possible that he could uh, play tonight. Bruce Cassidy not ruling him out after that skate. Not confirming that he could play either. They have to hear from the team doctors to make sure he is cleared. If he's cleared, he's in. If he's not, then they'll list him as probable for Game 6. But the fact that he's out there skating is obviously a positive sign. Charlie McAvoy, on the other hand, remains in COVID-19 protocol. Did not skate Monday. He is said to be feeling better. And doctors will let head coach know when McAvoy is out of protocol. Um, Bruce Cassidy spoke to him on Sunday he's feeling better so that's a positive when he's available don't have an answer for that Um, 
you know, for me, I had COVID last week. I tested positive on Tuesday. And then that counts as day zero. You're supposed to isolate for five additional days. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I came out of isolation. Then if McAvoy tested positive on Sunday, let's say, or Saturday, hopefully, Sunday would be... Saturday would take him out of isolation for Thursday's game six. So let's hope that he's feeling better, tests negative, and hopefully he could get back in there for game six, which is guaranteed. Jeremy Swayman will get the call for game five. It'll be his third straight start between the pipes. Um, Only the third time this season that he started three straight games. Uh, It was an optional skate, like I said yesterday. He was out there, so it's a good sign that he's not overly fatigued. He's energetic, young. The afternoon game helped with the recovery on Saturday. Um, And the Bruins aren't worried about three games in a row for him, not worried about fatigue. Um, Some momentum that he can carry on gives him some energy, kind of that adrenaline rush. Doesn't look tired or anything at all and um, they're going to keep an eye on him to make sure that he remains fresh Uh, if he falters could they go back to Allmark for game six that's a possibility so far he's played very well Uh, two starts two wins goals against average of two and a 9.25 save percentage Uh, and again it will be a different environment tonight but he's usually very cool, calm, composed. And the key for the Bruins, I think, will be scoring early, taking the crowd out of it. You know, Tony D'Angelo yesterday said that he wasn't overly impressed with the Boston Bruins home crowd. He thought Raleigh's crowd is louder. Um They probably have more scoreboard prompts to get them loud. Um, You know, they had a sign up on the scoreboard when there were some Bruins in the penalty box saying cheaters never win, that kind of stuff. A bit lame, but they certainly have more prompts to get loud than I think they do at TD Garden. Anyways, it's important for the Bruins to come out. You know, they're not going to get the matchups like they did at home, so you'll see Jordan Stahl out there against the Bergeron line. But since Bruce Cassidy reunited the top line, they've been pretty much unstoppable. So score first, score early, get the crowd out of it. Do not take stupid penalties. Let the the D'Angelo's of the world kind of run wild, try to mix it up. Be like Curtis Lazar the other night when D'Angelo was giving him shots to the face. He just stood there, took it. Should have been an extra penalty on that. Um, There wasn't, but kind of take that mentality. Don't get goaded into taking stupid penalties. Play smart. Play simple. Score early. And defend like crazy so that they can come home for Thursday night's game with a 3-2 series lead. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to the defensive pairing of Derek Forbort and Connor Clifton. With McAvoy and Lindholm both out with injury, uh, that third pairing has really stepped up. Uh, Forbort led all Bruins in ice time. Uh, both overall and shorthanded, blocking nine shots in Game 3. Clifton led all Bruins defensemen in Game 4 with 20 minutes, 16 seconds of ice time, six hits. Um, You know, they've been together a large portion of the season. Uh, They're playing well. They're playing fast. They're defending hard, playing hard. And Connor Clifton said, you know, they're developing some good chemistry together. 
Um, nobody's going to replace what McAvoy brings to the table, what Lindholm can bring to the table, but they're just trying to bl- play the best game that they can. Clifton said it's easy to get for these games. Uh, obviously, in the regular season, you know, you do your job, make it to the playoffs. Now it's time to lock in and play how we can as Bruins. Bruce Cassidy said Cliffy's physicality has been excellent. Counter hits, finishing guys, annoying guys that way, foreboard on the penalty kill, blocking shots, getting in the way. He's been invaluable in that respect. They're playing to their strengths. They're feeling good about their game, and their puck play has been good enough to help the Bruins get going the other way as well. Um, As to what the pairings would look like if Lindholm were to come back tonight, uh, that would be an extra left-hand shot. You know, you would think that Josh Brown would come out of the lineup. He's a right-hand shot, so someone will have to go and play on the right side. Uh, Would that be Mike Riley? Would it be Lindholm? I'm not really sure how much experience he has playing on on the uh, on the right side. Would you go Grizzly, Carlo, Lindholm, Riley, Forbrook, Clifton? That's probably what I would do, but uh, we'll see here what the plan will be if Hambus Lindholm is cleared and. Um, yeah, who comes out of the lineup to make room for him. I wouldn't expect any changes up front. And we'll get um, some news on that later this morning as the Bruins take to the ice in Carolina for the morning skate. You can follow Locked NHL Bruins at ENC McLaren for all the latest when it comes to uh, the Boston Bruins. There's a few other games Going tonight, thankfully the NHL staggered starts like they did not do last night. So it'll be the Bruins, Hurricanes at 7, Leafs Lightning, they're tied at 2. That game goes 7.30 in Toronto. Blues Wild tied at 2, that's at 9.30. Kings Oilers tied at 2, that'll be at 10 o'clock. Last night, Panthers avoiding a disastrous start to their playoff by beating the Capitals 3-2 in overtime to tie their series up. Uh, The Rangers just getting schooled by the Penguins. I had the Rangers coming out of the East. I thought Shesterkin would guide them pretty far. Not the case. Uh, They lost 7-2, Penguins up 3-1 in that series. And whoever wins the Carolina Bruins series likely will be playing the Penguins in the next round. Uh, Predators swept, they're done. Avalanche moving on, first team to move on, and then the Flames, who I picked to win the Cup, tying their series against the Dallas Stars. So, six series tied at two, one's 3-1, another one is already done. Speaking of the Avalanche, Kale McCarr overtook Brad Marchand in the scoring race in the playoffs. Uh, He has 10 points through four games. Sidney Crosby, Brad Marchand tied at nine uh, points down in second place. Bergeron has uh, the fourth most points tied with a bunch of guys uh, with six. Not quite sure where uh, Pasternak is at in this race. Charlie Coyle has four points through four games. Pasternak four points through four games. Those are your Bruins' leading scorers so far through the playoffs. Anyways, I'm very excited about tonight. You know, it's going to be tough playing on the road, but I think the Bruins have it in them. The Hurricanes seem a bit rattled, so that they can get on them early, finish their checks, hopefully get a puck past, I believe it'll be Antti Ranta who starts tonight. Um, then... Yeah, they can steal this one on the road and and try to clinch the series at home on Thursday. Quick show recommendation. I think I mentioned it yesterday. We started watching The Staircase on HBO Max. Uh, You might have seen the Netflix doc a couple uh, 
years ago about a man in Durham, North Carolina, uh, whose wife died at the bottom of a staircase. Big trial. So many moving parts in it. Very good. Colin Firth, Tony Collette. Uh, Colin Firth, especially good in this one. I'm also a big Spotify guy now. Those of you who follow me on Twitter saw that with my COVID brain, I deleted thousands of MP3 files from my phone and my computer the other day. So now I've pivoted to Spotify. It's pretty fun, actually, because uh, I listen to some more stuff than I would have just being limited to my uh, MP3 files. I'm Ian Cameron McLaren over there if you want to follow along. Uh, and you can also, of course, get the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast over there. You can also find the Locked On NHL podcast. Check them out as your next listen today. And, um, yeah, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode of the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. We'll be back tomorrow to recap tonight's game. And, um, yeah, hopefully tee up a potential series clinching game six for our Boston Bruins later this week. Happy Tuesday, friends. Stay safe out there. Go Bruins. And uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow here on the Locked On Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.